Here I'll discuss the areas we can help student teams based on years of feedback from teams across a variety of competitions. Some key topics I'll cover is how Siemens CAD and our PDM solutions can consolidate the number of tools your team needs, how it can handle large assemblies, how it enables faster changes without mistakes, addresses concerns with moving to Siemens CAD, and how our product data management helps to reduce complexity and wasted time. The first common issue we see in CAD is that the CAD software being used is mainly only for developing geometry. And although it likely has some basic FEA, CAM, and motion simulation, usually more software is needed for anything else. Then teams waste a lot of time coming up to speed on those various decoupled tools. And even with those tools, they often can't get access to the capabilities they would like to have. Siemens, on the other hand, improves efficiency since we include many of the capabilities directly in the CAD software, and we provide access to a complete suite of tools that work together and promotes collaboration through product data management. Red Bull Racing illustrates how this has helped them. Part of the reason that we've been such a successful team is really because we've been able to do more this year as a business than the previous year. If we look at the range of complex parts a front wing alone has, you'll see how the breadth of Siemens PLM solutions are used to create composite parts, metallic parts, electrical wiring looms, and even the jigs and fixtures that are used for testing performance and compliance. PLM tools allow the team to access the right information quickly, make smart decisions, and use our resources wisely. We've been partners with Siemens since the very beginning of the racing team, and they're actually one of our longest standing innovation partners. We partner Siemens PLM for several reasons, but ultimately we partner best in class, which we believe Siemens PLM are. And then secondly, it's important for us that we have partners who can provide suites of software, complete solutions. I've been with the team since 2006, and I've been around the PLM platform since those early days. And to see what we do now with the PLM tools, it's worlds apart. We use far greater suite of the product portfolio from Siemens. It touches a wider audience within the business and, and it truly is the backbone to our PLM business and yeah, it's, it's mission critical to what we do as a race team. Another common problem is that the CAD software used is not able to effectively handle more than a few hundred parts, so it's very slow, it crashes, and can't load the full assembly. So teams resort to breaking the assemblies into sub-assemblies, one for each sub-team or possibly upgrade their RAM and GPU to handle a larger assembly. Take a look at this demonstration. You can see that it only takes 2.5 megabytes of RAM and 26 seconds to load an assembly with 18,000 solids in our CAD.
Teams also waste a lot of time making changes to their CAD since it requires users to continually search for features, modify the setup, and fix rebuild issues since they're forced to use history-based modeling only. Siemens CAD has both history-based modeling and something called synchronous, which allows changes to be made directly to the faces of their CAD, and that saves huge amounts of time. An example of that is illustrated here in this demonstration. So we've received some markups of unexpected design changes for our tank. These have all come about from some late changes made to the mounting frame, and so we need to make some adjustments to accommodate. There are four changes to make. The first is to deepen a pocket 75mm for the hanger frame. The next, to bring face A in line with face B. After that, reduce the overall height of the tank to 425mm from the bottom. And finally, compensate for the loss of volume by angling this face out a further 15 degrees. Simple. For each change, we'll make the first revision as you would in most any other CAD system, working with the feature tree in a history-based approach. Then, we'll make exactly the same revision using synchronous technology. To help compare, we'll set a timer going in the top right. So, history-based approach first. Now, some of these traditional CAD systems do have direct editing techniques, so let's trial that type of tool for our first design change, editing this pocket. No good. Notice that this fails, assumingly due to some downstream features. So we'll need to go back to the history of the model and modify this feature itself. To save you falling asleep, we'll speed up the video where we can. This is taking time because as we edit the depth of the pocket, it's clear that another pocket is linked to match it. Design intent automation is usually seen as a good thing, but not when unexpected changes come about, as we have to find and remove that link. Okay, same change, but this time using synchronous technology. Timer restarted, and we'll go through this in real time because it's as simple as placing a dimension in 3D, entering the required value, and notice the other pocket is left well alone. Done. Back to a history-based approach for the second change, matching face A to face B. As we edit the top feature holding face A, because history-based CAD is order dependent, the cut below that holds face B doesn't yet exist so we can't match to it. Therefore we have to do some drag and drop reordering in the tree so that we can see what we want to match to. Oh, and notice some grey arrows that have just appeared in the tree. They're warning us that there's some kind of rebuild issue. We'll ignore these for now, but ultimately we need to come back and fix. The face angles need to match too, so we have to find the relevant feature and edit. Ah, this has had the effect of removing some rounds. Did we edit these rounds? No, but again, as one feature is delicately based on another in history-based CAD, often one change can turn into multiple changes. The clock is ticking. Let's take a look at how we'd make the same change in synchronous, including the draft. And don't blink or you'll miss this. One click, two clicks, done. History-based approach for the third change to reduce the overall height. We find which feature is the correct one to edit, usually not the most obvious one. A little bit more sketch work required for this change. Oh, and once again some rounding to fix. Are you still following along? Does everything look okay? Are you sure everything rebuilt 100% correctly? This doesn't look like it used to do. Time for another fix, but good thing we spotted this before any moulds were cut. Could have been costly. Using synchronous technology for that same change, we can make use of any reference dimensions that we place when we built this as a history-based model, but the difference is they'll actually control the geometry. Choose a dimension, enter the value, and let synchronous technology look after the rest. One last trip into the history-based approach, we need to increase the front angle 15 degrees to compensate for loss of internal volume from those other changes. Wait for the final rebuild, and wow, we have some big problems. There's a huge gap going through the middle of the part, the mounting holes in the top have also shifted, and some have even disappeared. Oh, and notice the red exclamation marks in the tree of failed features. We could spend many, many more minutes or hours attempting to fix this model. Or mm, maybe it'd just be quicker to start again. And that same final change using synchronous technology, we use what we call the steering wheel for this, our main control in synchronous. We can use this to simply rotate around this round and we can enter the precise value of 15 degrees. 
Done. All sorted. No rebuild issues. To get a better feel for how much this kind of technology could help your team, we have an online calculator that allows you to put in the number of designers you have, hours per week, along with other data shown on the screen, and combines this with data from documented case studies. When this is applied to an average student competition team, this shows it can save them around 4,000 hours per year by using synchronous combined with history-based modeling. This online calculator comes with an ebook that covers the value of the tech, quotes, and average time savings based on those documented case studies. For example, this customer who replaced SOLIDWORKS with Siemens CAD found they reduced the design cycle time by 50% and manufacturing cycle time by 15%. They also increased efficiency across their operations, including virtually eliminating errors from imported data, saving significant time in working with large assemblies, and increasing the use of existing data for new projects. The University of Michigan Solar Car team had something very similar to say. We were able to adjust the geometry really quickly uh, in the end of the towards the end of the design, so that's what allowed us to make almost a hundred iterations in two weeks. Another issue we find is that the CAD software used does not have good surfacing capabilities, which is important in systems that have complex surfaces. However, Siemens CAD provides its users a great deal of surfacing capabilities that enable them to quickly and easily develop CAD for complex geometry, as you can see in these demos. Another common issue is with conceptualization. Sketching goes back as long as people have been designing. And around 30 years ago, people started having the ability to create sketches in CAD systems. But today, a huge number of us still start with a concept on a piece of paper to get an idea of what we want. And that's because current solutions don't allow an iterative design process, and they don't allow you to quickly change things as your ideas evolve. The future of sketching is with an iterative process that makes it easy for you to make changes as you design instead of approaching CAD after making sketches by hand. For example, sketching in Siemens CAD anticipates what you're going to modify. It does the geometric constraining for you as needed. It applies geometric relationships for you based on surrounding geometry, and it works seamlessly with the data regardless of the source. An independent analysis shows a 30% reduction in time spent capturing design ideas by using this. Another trend is that students don't know about the correlation between the CAD they use in their careers and how much they earn. According to ZipRecruiter, designers with Siemens CAD software experience are paid substantially more. Also, did you know that many major companies are asking for students with Siemens CAD experience only or list it first? You can see this in Indeed.com from companies like SpaceX, Boeing, Amazon, Facebook, Fiat Chrysler Automotive, Pratt & Whitney, General Motors, Northrop Grumman, L3 Harris, Toyo Automotive, Space Dynamics Lab, Slack, General Dynamics, Curtis Wright, and Ares. So consider that if you join to see resumes with the same CAD experience, will you get the job? Now that I've gone through some of the benefits, let's see how easy it is to switch to Siemens CAD. First, you don't lose your work because you can either bulk migrate parts, assemblies, and drawings, or you can open individual files. First, if you use the data migration tool, you retain part geometry and features, assembly structures, part and assembly configurations, drawings, and properties and materials data. The other approach is to use the file open command to open the parts or assemblies. Now keep in mind that if the CAD software you're using is built on Parasolid, like SolidWorks, there's no CAD translation since we own the Parasolid technology, and that's what Siemens CAD is built on. Then after importing, users can make changes directly to the part surfaces through synchronous technology as if they were originally designed in our software. This allows you to move, angle, resize, mold, fill, etc. the faces or whole feature sets 
as you can see in this demonstration. We're going to be working in the context of our assembly today. And one thing to note is that these parts, not all of them inside of our assembly, are going to be necessarily traditional CAD NX models. Some of these may be from outside CAD sources, but we don't really care too much in this context because synchronous modeling allows us to use them as though they were traditionally designed inside of an X. We can select faces, start pushing and pulling, and even since we are working in the context of our assembly, can tell it to mate to the face that it was originally attached to. This gives us a huge benefit whenever working with any kind of part, whether it be internal or external. In this next situation, Maybe one of our parts is fine, but the holes or the geometry that's associated to it needs to be modified a little bit. We can go into the part itself and start changing where these placements are, whether by changing the face as we did initially in the context of our assembly, or even changing the placement of the entire feature itself. There are many different ways that we can push it off, such as offsetting, keeping things concentric, etc., and different motions that we can do by angles, and it doesn't even matter what we select. It can be fillets, edge blends, holes, you name it. Speaking about holes, although we do have a few, what if we don't want to keep some of them? We can start filling surfaces in this case, or if we want to adjust all of our holes at once, we can select one, make any changes we want, and then select the equal radius so that every single one that's on this piece will be selected and modified to what we want it to be. Saves a lot of time, effort, and button clicks in the process. That and even becomes a feature. So if we wanted to change something downstream, we can go back into that feature that was created in our navigation tree. You may be wondering how long it takes to learn the Siemens interface. So for comparison's sake, I have an interface outline here that you're likely familiar with. One problem I would like to highlight with this layout is that some users find it confusing to understand where to go for certain steps, since there are three menus to go to. Now to address this, if you fold these menus into the top ribbon and move this ribbon to the left, you have a very similar interface to what we have, but now it's easier to find things because you have one place to go for everything. Also notice that the mouse gestures include views and commands. This is also fully customizable. And if you ever find yourself trying to remember where a button is, the command finder will highlight that button's location even if it's within a submenu. The software will pull up the menu so you can see where that option is. The software also helps you learn it while you're working with it. For example, when selecting an option such as an edge blend, Siemens CAD provides contextual help such as a display of different options for that operation and a video tutorial. Additional content is available which is connected to that operation such as documentation, separate video tutorials, and visual assistance. To learn the software, we have a variety of different resources for you, including content showing you how to move from another CAD platform. For example, there's one learning path in the documentation showing you how to apply your skills to find familiar tools in the user interface, review how ordered modeling supports basic history-based modeling, and learn assembly construction. The documentation also covers content by functionality like mechanical and electrical design, simulation, manufacturing, cloud, and document management along with recommended learning paths for those that are new to CAD or come from another CAD platform. E-learning provides access to a wide variety of learning material, from the basics, content for seasoned users from other CAD systems, manufacturing courses, additive, weldments, robotics, motion, sheet metal, tube frames, and much more. 
Our support center contains a variety of troubleshooting resources along with getting started content. And there are also YouTube quick tip videos. This world championship team testifies as to the ease of use of the software. Last year, we became world champions. This is a huge challenge because every year the competition gets more fierce. So we have to be at our best and we have to have the best partners. I'm currently using Signus software for a month, I guess, but it wasn't hard at all to learn uh, thanks to the user-friendly interface. So Siemens' software is uh, state-of-the-art, but that uh, doesn't have to mean that it has to be intimidating. Even we as a student team, we are able to uh, make use of the program and uh, along the way we find new features that are not that difficult to, to learn ourselves. It all makes the design process uh, easier. Keep in mind that you can also get certified in Siemens CAD, which is great for your resume. Next, I'll highlight another problem teams face. They don't have a good way to manage their files, so they typically resort to cloud storage solutions and naming conventions to keep their things organized. However, they normally find it's hard to keep everyone on the same page. For example, two students can use the same files at the same time, which can result in large time investments in getting everybody back on the same page. Teams also find it hard to find the right files. They can spend up to 30% of their time searching for the files that they need. This is made worse when someone graduates and they dump all of their files on the team to sort through. And teams spend time manually developing their bill of materials as changes are made. That's where Team Center can help by managing all data, including CAD, SIM files, commonly used documents like PDF, Word, and Excel documents. And this is from all domains, such as design, simulation, test, and manufacturing. This breaks down silos and promotes collaboration, provides one single source of current data, allows you to specify and integrate requirements into your process, have the bill of materials update as you change your designs, and easily learn from the experiences of previous years since everything is revision and version controlled. Keep in mind that Team Center was recognized by Forrester Wave as a PLM software leader and received the highest possible score in the market presence category, the highest score in the current offering category, and above par scores in 23 criteria. The University of Michigan Solar Guard team illustrates how this has been useful to their team. Without this software, I do not see how we could build the car that we do. If we had used Team Center in 2013, we would have shaved off about two months in our design process. So one of the big things has been managing our files. So before we had a really difficult time managing which file we were working on and just integrating all the files from all the different divisions. And that has changed drastically this year with Team Center. Using that software, we were able to combine all of our files together in a single, concise way. NX and Team Center help us work together, uh, routing between our different divisions. Uh, Aero can work on their Aero bodies and import it into a new assembly. And then Mechanical can go and do their thing, what they need to do. Any analysis, uh, fill in the parts. And then Electro can go in once Mechanical's all done and wire everything up. Ask Mechanical to make any changes if they need to for spacing. Uh, they can wire everything, put in their electric components, and then we can bounce ideas off each other as this is all happening. I guess it's just these tools that have, have just sped up the process, really. However, if your focus is primarily managing CAD data, quickly implementing a PDM system, and leveraging the cloud storage system you're already using, then our cloud PDM for CAD may be a better fit. This is very easy to set up and allows you to use different cloud systems like GrabCAD, Google Drive, OneDrive, and Dropbox as is and set it up so that it acts like a PDM system to check in and out CAD files and control versioning. In order to learn how to use and set up Team Center, there are a variety of e-learning courses and resources within the Support Center. And this from our Document Center shows how to set up the cloud-based PDM. So to summarize, I covered how Siemens CAD and our PDM solutions can save your team a lot of time through the handling of large assemblies, making changes much faster, better surfacing, and consolidating the number of tools needed. You don't lose your work and learning the software is easy and leveraging PDM will help reduce complexity and wasted time.